This video is for Keystone Anchor 3, Bioenergetics. Bioenergetics has a lot to do with photosynthesis and respiration, biological energy. This is a picture of a mitochondria. Mitochondria is the energy producer of the cell. It is the chemical reactions that happen within the mitochondria that we call aerobic respiration. If you notice some of the structures of the mitochondria, you'll see that, that the mitochondria has this inner folded membrane. That inner folded membrane is where these chemical reactions are taking place. This graphic shows the steps of aerobic respiration. All respiration starts with glycolysis, glyco, sugar, lysis to split. So we're splitting a sugar molecule. The result is something called pyruvic acid. What happens after that depends. If oxygen is present, then the pyruvic acid can be absorbed by the mitochondria and undergo several different reactions. Splitting a glucose molecule uh, in stage one will yield two ATP. It's not a lot of energy, but it is some. This process of glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm. The pyruvic acid in the presence of oxygen can uh, enter the mitochondria and through the Krebs cycle yield another two ATP. One of the waste products of that chemical reaction is carbon dioxide. That's this center or second area of sequence of reactions. The third sequence of reactions, the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation will yield 34 ATP. And one of the byproducts of this chemical reaction is water. So when we say things like respiration is the opposite of photosynthesis, where we take sugar and oxygen and it gives off carbon dioxide and water, the carbon dioxide is a waste product of the Krebs cycle, whereas water is a waste product of the electron transport chain oxidative phosphorylation sequence of chemical reactions. Cellular respiration can be divided into two major categories, anaerobic or aerobic. Aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria and it requires oxygen. If there is no oxygen present in the animal cell, then the chemical pathway will be lactic acid fermentation. So in this lactic acid fermentation, lactic acid is the byproduct and it will result in two ATP. So it's a significant drop from the 34 to 36 total ATP from aerobic respiration. That's why whenever you're exercising, you feel a burning sensation. Lactic acid is building up. Also, this shift will cause you to feel tired and worn out because you are no longer making so much ATP, you're making a significantly less amount of ATP. In plant cells, the lack of oxygen takes a chemical pathway called alcoholic fermentation, and the result is ethanol. So plants like potatoes, rye, um, can be barley, can be used to manufacture uh, ethanol, which is an alcohol product. This experiment, which was done hundreds of years ago, illustrates that soil is not an important component to plant growth. So what materials do plants use to grow? Well, that question is answered by the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is simply taking water, carbon dioxide, using the power of sunlight to make glucose and oxygen. That sunlight is collected by plant leaves. Plant leaves are the predominant part of the plant that have chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the molecule that absorbs sunlight. Here you can see a cross section of a plant leaf the outer layer of cuticle, and then this upper and lower epidermis, and then inside we have this mesophyll layers. Notice though on the bottom of the leaf, we have a small opening. That opening allows carbon dioxide to get into the leaf, which is necessary for photosynthesis, and oxygen, which is a byproduct or waste product of photosynthesis, to leave. Water also leaves through that uh, small opening called a stomata. Guard cells can open and close that opening depending on the environmental conditions. This is a close-up of a chloroplast. Chloroplasts are unique to 
plant cells. In this case, chloroplasts have a double membrane, an outer and inner membrane, and they have this fluid called the stroma. They also have thylakoid membranes where most of the photosynthesis reactions are going to take place. The thylakoid mem membranes are stacked uh, in stacks called granum, and those stacks help uh, collect as much light as possible and keep light from penetrating uh, through the entire leaf, but rather to collect as much as possible. There's two major parts to photosynthesis, the photo side, which requires light, and the synthesis side, which is where the molecules are being brought together, especially to make uh, glucose. Let's label this chloroplast and um, use that word bank to see what some of these uh, major parts of this chloroplast are, as well as some of the products and reactants necessary for photosynthesis. Notice here we have water is required. That water is going to be split into hydrogens and oxygens. Some of those hydrogens are going to be used to make ATP. The oxygen is going to be released as a waste product. Sunlight is required for the reactions of photosystem 1 and 2. In the synthesis part of the reactions, carbon dioxide is necessary. Uh, um, carbon dioxide is going to be a necessary part of the Calvin cycle using the power of ATP to make or synthesize glucose molecules. Remember that ATP is an energy molecule. Every living thing needs ATP for energy. In this case, that energy is stored between the second and third phosphate bonds. So whenever that phosphate bond is broken, the energy is released, and then it requires some energy to replace that bond. Some living things make their own food. Other living things have to eat food. And if we're going to put these two into categories, we'll call them autotrophs, which make their own food, and heterotrophs, which have to eat food. Only autotrophs can perform photosynthesis. Notice this membrane. This membrane is part of the thylakoid, and it's where most of the photosynthesis reactions take place. The membrane itself is a lipid bilayer, much like the cell membrane. There's a phosphates on the outside, and lipid tails on the inside. The phosphates on the outside are water-loving. The lipid tails are hydrophobic. The reactions start with photosystem 2. Here, light will strike photosystem 2 and split a water molecule. Then, through a complex of what we call the electron transport, um, some of that energy then is going to be used by photosystem 1, with the help of some light, to make NADPH. Another enzyme called ATP synthase generates ATP molecules. All of this is just harvesting light energy and converting it into chemical energy, ATP or NADPH. Light energy to chemical energy. That's kind of the first step of the photosynthesis reactions. Notice that the hydrogen ions used to make that HTP are coming from the split water molecule. The oxygen is a waste product, but the hydrogens are going to be used to generate this uh, ATP synthase to make ATP. Here we see an emphasis on the light independent reactions. This was what we just looked at, our thylakoid membranes with photosystem 2, photosystem 1, and the ATP synthase. But we're going to use that ATP and that energy molecule NADPH and those two energy molecules are going to power the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle, instead of using light energy and water, is going to use carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide, combined with the hydrogens, C6H12O6, is going to be what makes the product or sugar. And that is a brief overview of some of the major parts to photosynthesis.